Fate comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You're listening to The Moment of Power with Azano Eddie Thompson. Daily audio devotions to energize your day presented by the Advent Hero Ministries. Our moment of power topic today is the Ten Commandments Revisited, Delivered to Obey. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. These were the beginning words of the Ten Commandments. God was reminding the children of Israel that before he asks them to obey him, before he gives them his commandment, he was telling them that he had delivered them. Now, only people who are delivered can keep the commandment. Egypt is a symbol of sin and bondage, the bondage of sin. In Egypt, the children of Israel were not free. They were not free to keep the commandments of God. They were not free to sacrifice to their God because sacrificing the clean animals to God is abomination to the Egyptians because they even worshipped those animals. When Moses showed up and asked them to rest from their work, the word is Shabbat, Sabbath, to keep the Sabbath in Exodus, we are told that Pharaoh was angry. So they could not freely keep the commandments of God in Egypt. In the bondage of sin, no one could keep the commandment of God. We don't have the power in and of ourselves. Sinful man, fallen man, is the legal captive of Satan. And except Jesus comes and breaks the bond, and that's exactly what God did to the children of Israel. He says, I am the Lord which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. God was telling the children of Israel that look, I am the one who can deliver you. And it is the same thing that Jesus does to us. So only delivered people can actually keep the commandments of God. Only people who have been saved. And that's why it is said that we do not actually keep the commandments of God to be saved. Only saved people can lovingly keep God's commandments in the power of God because they are now operating under the power of God. In John chapter 8, verse 11, Jesus was in a situation in which the religious leaders of his days wanted to rope him with, with a woman who was caught in the act of adultery. They were looking for words with which they could nail him. And they brought a woman the woman caught in the very act of adultery. And they said, in the law of Moses, she ought to be stoned to death. And what do you say? The story has it that Jesus was done with those guys, that he stooped on the floor and started writing their sins. And he rose and said, anyone who had not committed this kind of sins should first throw the stone. And they all disappeared. After that, he asked the woman, had no man condemned thee? In verse 11, we read, quote, She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. End of quote. So Jesus delivered her, not only from immediate death, but Jesus delivered her from her past sins, from the bondage of sin. Jesus had to cast out demons out of this woman. Demons that were holding her captive. Demons that were controlling even her affections. Jesus had to deliver her. And after she was delivered, Jesus said, Go and sin no more. Only people who are delivered can keep the commandments of God. And that is why we are told that deliverance is the grace. You know, the grace comes, the transforming grace of God, the forgiveness of God. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God 
hath before ordained that we should walk in them. End of quote. There are people who are saying they are trying to separate or divorce grace from obedience, but, but they cannot be divorced. Anyone who has received the grace of God, the transforming grace of God, the Bible says in verse 10, we just read, that that person will be created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So when you are delivered, you are actually delivered to lovingly obey. You see, if you are delivered from sin and then you go back to sin, it means you have not really been delivered. So God delivered the children of Israel and gave them the commandments and told them that they need not sin anymore. Paul captured the same thought in Romans chapter 5 verses 20 to chapter 6 verse 2. Let's read those verses. Chapter 5 from verse 20 to chapter 6 verse 2. Quote, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound that as sin had reigned unto death even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by jesus christ our lord what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound god forbid how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer Therein. End of quote. In other words, people who are saved, who are delivered, who are saved by grace, who have been delivered from the bondage of sin, cannot continue to live in sin. And if you are not living in sin, of course, you are living a life of loving obedience to God. The Bible tells us that Jesus actually died. He came to redeem us from all iniquities, to deliver us from the bondage of sin and that makes us to become zealous unto good works titus 2 verse 14 it says who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity you can put the word delivered in place of redeem who redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works end of quote god is calling you today where do you find yourself do you find yourself in the bondage of sin do you find that you cannot of your own power extricate yourself from sin? God is saying, look, there is hope. I can break the power of sin. I can deliver you from your Egyptian experience. And on Mount Sinai, God comes to you and begins to write his law in your heart. Not on the table of stone this time around, but on the table of your heart so that you can lovingly obey him. And that law is called the law of liberty in James chapter 2. It sets you free because the Spirit of God enables you, empowers you to live a life of victory, victorious Christian life. And that's the life of freedom. It is only in that sense that it could be said that you are free indeed. Our Father in heaven, we give you glory. We worship you. We pray that in this series, as we look at the Ten Commandments and we look at the spirit of the law, what it means to lovingly obey you, what it means to be a peculiar people that are zealous of good works, what it means for us to be created in Christ Jesus, for we to be his workmanship unto good works. O oh Lord, Help us to begin to understand these spiritual truths. Many people have been deluded to think that grace does not mean that they should keep the commandment of God. They actually mean that grace becomes a license to sin. But Lord, that's not what, what your word says. The devil is deceiving thousands upon thousands of people and he wants them to be lost. So we come to you today in this moment of power with the same power that you delivered the children of Israel from Egypt and gave them your good law. Lord, come to us today and transform us by your power. Deliver your son who is listening right now from the power of addiction immorality from the power of sin from the power of some mental delusion help us today to be delivered thank you for your goodness and mercies thank you because you are here to save us 
Thank you for your salvation, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you.